Hello, here I am recording a sermon in my house again. Haven't done this in a long time, uh, though I had plenty of practice in 2020. And I thought I'd set up in, my, in our new kitchen, since many of you got to watch the progress uh, in here throughout the long months of lockdown as we remodeled our whole uh, kitchen and living room. It is so beautiful and bright and we love it so much and glad to be on this side of the remodel project. And we're glad to have such a beautiful place to spend our days uh, in this round of quarantine because yes, COVID is in the Beale house right now. Dave tested positive a week ago, Saturday night, so last Saturday, and he was sick for about two days, missed a few days of work, of course. And, but, and then I felt great last Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I thought, no worries, I'm just gonna sail right through this. But Wednesday afternoon and evening, I started getting a fever and some aches. Uh, Thursday morning, I felt much better, but still not 100%, and decided to take a home test, which was positive. And counting back those two days from when my symptoms showed up, uh, doctors say I wouldn't have been contagious until Monday, and I hadn't been around anybody in that time frame. So I feel confident that I didn't spread this beyond our household. And I wanna let you know that Dave and I are both recovering uh, well and feel pretty good. All our boys are healthy, and the college boys are back on campus in Spokane, living their best, masked, and boosted lives. I wanna thank you all, Summit Avenue, for your concern and kindness and prayers. I am grateful to be part of such a caring congregation. I also wanna thank our staff and volunteers for leading last week worship, worship last week's worship and this week's as well. And a special thank you to Deanna for stepping up uh, to lead Audrey's service yesterday and for our tech team live streaming it to people at home like myself and for our hospitality team welcoming and serving people. Uh, I was so sad to uh, not be able to be there. And uh, lastly, I wanna offer deep gratitude to Sandy for preaching last Sunday. Back in December, when the grief of so many deaths in our church and in our whole world just weighed so heavy. And I knew we could all use a message of comfort and hope. I called Sandy, who is so gifted in caring for tender souls in grief, and asked her if she would preach a sermon for us. So we had dialed in January 9th, and then it all worked out um, when I couldn't be there last week. And so I'm very grateful uh, that that worked out. And what with snow and ice and COVID, it's been four weeks since I've been with you all in person. And every one of those weeks I had planned and wanted to be there with you in person. So I wanna let you know how much I miss you all and love you and pray God's peace and love upon you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So each week on Tuesday mornings, we gather as a staff, and one of the first things we do in our staff meetings is we read the scripture lesson for the coming Sunday. It is always a rich and wonderful conversation with Woody and Deanna and now Alex, bringing so much wisdom and perspective and insight. Uh, and this week, as we read from Romans 6 together, Woody reminded us that these lines from Romans 6 are read at the beginning of the liturgy of the funeral mass in the Catholic Church. And it turns out in many other church traditions at memorial services. When there is a casket or an urn as part of the service, as it is brought into the church, a white baptismal cloth will be placed over it and these words read, therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, 
we will certainly be united with Jesus in a resurrection like his. Those of you who watched General Colin Powell's funeral this fall may have noticed that when his casket entered the church, and he had that full military honor corps from all the different um, armed forces, and it was draped with an American flag as it emerged from the vehicle and then as they walked it and processed it into the building. But once inside the sanctuary, the casket and that flag were covered with the beautiful white baptismal cloth, which is to say, baptism and the promise of the sacrament is bigger than any flag or nationality or personal identity. For there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Last week, Sandy brought us a much needed message of comfort and hope in the face of death. Today, our Epiphany scriptures invite us to reflect on our Lord's baptism, his death and his resurrection. And our scripture invites us to reflect upon our own baptism, death and resurrection. There's uh, nothing quite like being stuck home with a case of plague to get one thinking on death and life and the hope of resurrection. I wanna read to you from this little prayer book I, brought, I bought over Christmas. Deanna had recommended it to me and it is very lovely. It is called Every Moment Holy. It's volume two, Grief, uh, Death, Grief, and Hope. And I wanna to read to you um, from the foreword by Douglas Kane McElvey. Listen to these words. From the moment of our baptism into the death of Jesus, we begin the practice of dying by degrees dying to self and to our self-centered pursuits of anything that wars against our vocation as disciples. We begin the long sanctifying process of taking up our crosses each day, seeking to crucify those parts of our hearts that yet cry me and mine and surrendering piece by piece, those territories of our souls we had so long claimed as our own, now submitting them instead to the Lordship of Christ. What we don't always see is how that daily dying to self is a part of the same process that finds its final culmination for the believer in physical death. He goes on, for in that last leg of our mortal journey, we release all material goods we've accumulated, all comforts and entertainments and pleasures of this world, all illusions of our own power or mastery over life and all temporal human relationships. And we grasp instead in our finally emptied hands, the hand of our Lord and shepherd, who is the only constant, the only relationship that we do not release in that transition from life to death to life everlasting. From the moment of our baptism into Christ, we begin the long process of dying by degrees to self, to self-centeredness, to me and mine. Or as Paul said to the Romans, we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was baptized as a child at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And after giving a trial sermon to that congregation at Ebenezer when he was 19 years old, Martin was ordained as a minister. 
And he went on to get his doctorate in systematic theology from Boston University. He wanted to be a scholar and a teacher to study and spend his time in reading and writing. But God called him to preach and to go out into the world and lead people toward greater justice and mercy. In his dying to self, Dr. King let go his dreams of academia and the safety of books and embrace more and more fully the dream of God, that dream of the beloved community where all people of all colors and races live and love and are treated equally. He died tragically and too soon, but in his dying, he left a legacy of love, truth-telling, solidarity, and the pursuit of justice. On this second day of Epiphany and this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, we are invited by the scriptures to consider our own journey from baptism to death to everlasting life. To reflect on the letting go God is calling us to in this season of life, the days we are now currently living. So friends, today I encourage you to consider and reflect on what cries of me or mine have you perhaps been making lately? What territories of your soul that you have long claimed as your own is God inviting you to surrender piece by piece and to submit instead to the Lordship of Christ? What do you feel like your fists are holding on to tightly that God is asking you to let go, to loosen your hold on? It is a daily task, this letting go and trusting God what we don't see right away, but slowly becomes more clear, is how that daily dying to self prepares us for the process that comes to completion in our physical death. So that when we let go all the stuff we've accumulated, all our fears and all our clamorings for power, we may grasp instead in our finally emptied hands the hand of our Lord Jesus, the one constant in this life and in the next, the one who holds us and who will never let us go. To Jesus be all glory, praise, and honor. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.